Hi, my name's Jamie, and I play bass in Maybe She Will. Um, I'm here to do a production walkthrough of our song, Green and Pleasant Land. So the song starts with um, mandolin, which was um, which, which I played and wrote. Um, I've never played mandolin before, so this was uh, a struggle to record. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with my first ever bit of mandolin composition. Alongside that mandolin, we've got like um, kind of a few drones running. It's all pretty quiet there to set. It's a little bit of atmosphere for it to sit in without that. This feels a little bit claustrophobic and austere. First change up in the song. We had the violins enter, which played without any um, no vibrato, so they got a very um, kind of plain sound. It's kind of a bit more reminiscent of um, kind of like old kind of folk music, and then the kind of like grandeur of kind of more sort of like classical music on those, which is kind of. Um, ties into the uh, kind of concept of the song. As well as those kicking in, we've got the um, kind of sort of big, deep sort of kind of toms, immense sound kind of, um, a bit like some big sort of, um, kind of slightly cinematic kind of sort of calf skin old percussion but it's just a it's just a, um, the drum kit with some some dampening on really and tuned really deep kit entering as well as um, so I've got labelled as woodwinds but it's actually um, kind of choir mellotron which is like really dramatic sound kind of used well mellotron is instrument made popular by popular by the Beatles but it's kind of endured as a bit of a sort of timeless sound for when you kind of want a bit of um, well in this case a bit sort of like some gothic drama I suppose difference in, in that section. It really creates all the, the lift that we get in there. Okay, then we've got the, basically the full, full band kicking on, on the same melody there. Guitars are kind of playing sort of a kind of similar line, sort of weaving in and out of the melody from the, um, the violins, but a little different, maybe a bit similar to the mandolin as well. Kind of sort of shiny parts. Not those. At that point, we've also got the um, that's where the piano enters as well. Not that section. Love this piano sound. It was recorded at our friend um, Lee's Dulcetone Studios. And he's got a really nice chapel grand piano there. It's got a lovely mellow sound, which really works for the, um, the kind of more uh, like the softer moments on the album. Beautifully played by our very own Matt Daly. in melty sort of lead very maybe she will sound entering there. And the sort of 
final kind of lift of this, um, the first section of song, we get the first introduction of the choir, which is a pretty sort of key element of um, the composition in this song. Beautifully sung, and I really like the um, the contrast in the uh, sweetness of that, and some of the, the kind of angsty elements that sort of kick up a kick up a little there. Piece gets all green and distorted. Then loads of guitars playing, loads of shred. as um, this sort of uh, Vangelis sort of bass synth sound that you can never really pick out in the mix, but you know, add some nice sort of thump to that section, I suppose. Like sort of scene scene change, kind of the next section of the song. It's kind of a me melody written on the violin, the mandolin, doubled on the piano. When I find it, Strings kick in there and the drums. Packs that very kind of um, yeah, traditional violin sound and playing there. choir comes back in kind of becomes the focus of this section, it's sort of key melody. Girls did a really beautiful job of singing that there. But along with that kind of beauty there is a certain a definite tension, tension to this song that kind of um, you know, slight elements of dissonance that kind of relate to the concept and you can feel like even the next section of the song is you know a huge huge left turn but I think there's enough there in the composition that kind of um, tells you that it's coming. This section purely to piano which is played off grid, which is um, you know, not to the click, which is kind of heresy, maybe she will. Sort of creepy uh, symbol scrapes kicking in there. into the um, the really obvious sort of kind of big sludgy outro, you know, real left turn, but um, yeah, I think the first time Robin sent me a demo of this, that this bit really caught me off guard and uh, sort of blew my mind a bit, but you know, eventually I kind of uh, yeah, became comfortable with this much of a left turn and it's you know, one of my you know, favourite parts of the album, this, this section in particular. Sludgy guitars is playing the, the chords. Well, just one note. Not the mean, as well as I think it's just one one bass play, playing through a guitar amp in the centre. It 
I love the sound of. That light instrument just looks like it should be played in Black Rebel Motorcycle Club and um, it, sort of, it looks absolutely giant on Robin when he was playing it in. It's kind of a sort of slightly humorous moment for me. kind of the centerpiece of what's going on here is the kind of violin dissonance that um, the, um, the violinist Thomas Leet um, mainly came up with all these kind of dissonant parts as, um, as improvisations that he did at the time, which was you know, completely stood in here in this kind of come together. Got a few of the, him just playing the, just the chords, and then other parts that are, you know, like madness. choir bend that kicks in, um, which is kind of aping a shepherd tone a little bit where the, um, the, the note they're singing just continues to rise and sort of creates more and more tension as the song's going, the song's going on. And there's a kind of like a whole chord rising, which creates quite a lot of dissonance, but um, the, you know, this section is dissonant. Girls did like a really amazing job managing to hold each note there as it kind of went up. Um, and yeah, we started recording the choir with the more traditional parts, and um, they were very patient to like um, try and, you know, because we didn't really know if this idea would work or it just sound, you know, purely like chaos there and just, you know, really a musical. But they you know, did a phenomenal job of just, just holding those notes and keeping keep going and keeping it rising. <laughs> cheekily in there. Then you've got the final, um, kind of final little crescendo there with one string part that just goes you know, slightly over the beat. I kind of, we sort of did a lot of joking about the, the um, for doing that part in the orchestra, the conductor would turn to look at you to give you the kind of the evil eye of making the mistake there. But um, you know, it's, 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 and it was a mistake at the time, um, you know, missed by one beat. But you know, it's an absolutely beautiful little bit of chaos that finishes the song off perfectly. 